lecture in which we are going to begin with 2D random works. And before going into 2D random works, I just want to go back to our discussion and I think I had forgotten you to show how we can fit the normal distribution I'm just gonna quickly browse through the program for that so imagine you want to find out whether a given set of points in this case the black points they fit to a normal distribution well how to go about doing that we know that a normal distribution has this particular form so the first thing we will do is create a function which will be the type of function that we're trying to fit all right so it will take as an input x it will take two parameters a and b so the whole purpose of the fitting is to find out the appropriate parameters which will minimize the error between the fit and the raw data all right so then this is the data we had from the histogram x wells and y wells so x values and y values is what we have then we call the function curve fit which is inside scipy.optimize we pass the function handle which will do the function evaluations we will pass the data that is the x values and y values the output is the set of parameters in the fitting function the second output we don't worry about all right once we have that we can use the same function but now we pass the output of the curve fit function as the two parameters so over here i'm assigning a as the output zero of the output of the curve fit function while i'm assigning b as the output of the curve fit this is the second value of the output so once i do that i plot it and i give it a label and i also plot the raw data and after a lot of iterations or when you move ahead in time significantly you will see that the distribution of locations does satisfy the normal distribution okay there is something which i said i would discuss in the last class but then i forgot about it but anyway it's not that difficult it is there in the the um, html that i've uploaded on my website and you can download it from there the description is also there so now uh, let us move on to two dimensional random box so let me create a new file all right so what are we trying to do so in one dimensional random walk we had a random walk in which we had a walker or a particle and it would choose the step that it would take on the line either it would it would sample from a step size distribution so p of delta x versus delta x so it would sample from this distribution and then decide whether it has to go over here or here or how much it has to go over here so now when we extend this idea to two dimensions we obviously are dealing with a two dimensional plane rather than a line and we can pose certain questions for example what are the number of steps taken before a given random walk exits a certain diameter so if i define this as the crossing boundary lakshman rekha if you like so after how many steps does the particle exit and i want i am interested to find out the total or the distribution of steps so for example i choose particle number 0 it maybe took 25 steps particle 1 maybe it took less steps maybe it went straight ahead particle 2 maybe it, take, it took more steps so once i have say uh, 10000 particles i have a bunch of 
total steps the particle has taken then i can find out the histogram of this to find out the pdf of n that is the number of steps alternately i could also ask the question after so here we are asking how many steps it took or we could equivalently ask that at a fixed time t what is the distribution of the locations that is the radial distance from the origin so if this is the origin at a given time t what is the distribution of locations of the particle so i am interested in the the distance rather than the coordinates so these are some of the questions which are quite important from various physically naturally occurring phenomena like foraging so if you have a herd of lions and say you are in the savanna and you are hunting for food so what what do predators do they move a large distance then they look around they look around then if they find something well and good then they know that the area is depleted in resource and they'll make a nice jump again and then they'll again look around so there are these large jumps and there are the small foraging okay so this foraging behavior does appear to have such a pattern and as you will see such kinds of patterns are common for what are what are called as levy frights okay but for example if you're trying to figure out how an insect on the surface of a pond is moving you track the insect and you will see that it has all sorts of behavior going on but then what dictates that behavior or what governs that motion of the insect is it the presence of some other insect how does the motion get altered in the presence of other insect how long how many steps does it take for the insect to reach for example say a source of food so these are some of the questions and depending on the problem at hand uh, it's usually how you would define the random walk there is no universality to how you would go ahead and define the random walk okay so with this background let us begin so we will need the opening bit of code and i will copy it from pardon me i will copy it from one of the previous programs all right so so now how do we go about this let us look at the simplest random walk what is called as the pearson walk so a pearson walk is you start from the origin and you have a sort of uniform not a uniform but you have a fixed distance that you would take so each time a step is taken the length of the step r is fixed it is equal to l but the direction can vary between 0 and 2 pi so the direction is uniformly distributed but the step size is fixed so in terms of um, writing down the pdf of this if it's one dimension so you would say p of r is delta r minus l right so this is the delta function and accordingly you can find the cumulative distribution of this function as well so the cumulative so c of r it will be integral p of r prime dr prime r going from 0 to infinity or in this case 0 to r and so this will become integral delta r prime minus l dr prime 0 to r so now if the domain if 0 to r right if the domain of integration so if l lies in 0 to r then this integral is going to be 1 if l it does not belong it, it is outside 0 to r then this integration will be 0 so the cumulative distribution for such a uh, function it will be 0 and then suddenly 1 so now if you look back and on how to sample a certain random number from a given probability density function 
you would uniformly you would you would draw a uniform number between 0 and 1 projected on this curve and then projected back because it's a vertical line all your samples will fall at r equal to l and obviously these are properties of the dirac function delta dirac delta function okay so i've used the important property that integral f of x prime delta x prime minus a d x prime from l1 to l2 lower limit and upper limit or l1 to u1 this is going to be f of a if a lies between l1 and l2 if a does not lie in the domain then it will be zero so these are just some properties of the delta function so now this is okay i mean this is quite easy to implement you can imagine you have a fixed increment r so you're starting over here you know you you have a fixed increment so your trajectory will will lie somewhere on this circle at the next time instant but as to which angle it will take that depends on the sampled value between 0 and 2 pi okay so if it's 0 it will move over here if it's pi it will move over here if it's pi by 4 it will go over here and so on and after you reach this point you will again do this so if it's after reaching this point if it is pi by 2 it will go something like this okay so let's try to implement this so first things first we can borrow certain things from the previous lecture so let me open that file as well so we will use the uniform distribution code so here we will say get angle and it will go from 0 to 2 pi and so what is the workflow that we are looking over here so the workflow will be we initialize initialize the vector that is x naught so this is at t equal to 0 so this is time this is x this is y all right then we want to find an increment so we will we know that in this case the radius the step is fixed so it is l we will sample theta and we will sample some theta okay so theta belongs to a uniform distribution between 0 and 2 pi now based on this the delta x will be l cos theta and delta y will be l sin theta so at this so at at the first step so instead of calling it delta t i'll just call it one it will be some delta x1 delta y1 then at time 2 it will be delta x2 delta y2 and so on for n it will be delta xn delta yn so at the end of this the trajectory will be the cumulative sum up until that point so suppose i want to find out the trajectory up until 3 so it will be simply 0 plus delta x1 plus delta x2 plus delta x3 this will be the x coordinate the y coordinate will be 0 plus delta y1 plus delta y2 plus delta y3 so if i sort of plot the cumulative sum all the way i should be able to find out the trajectory well let's find out so over here what is n it is not the particle number it is the time instances that we want okay unlike the previous problem where n was the number of particles that we were initializing here we are fixing our attention on one particle finding out all the mutually independent steps that it will take and then we make a cumulative sum all right so n over here is is representing the time steps okay so let me just put a comment all right diff get stride n it should simply return np dot ones and the size will be n comma right so it has to just return a bunch of ones all right so these are the two functions that we want 
well now i can focus on one particle so i will say how many time steps do we want so let's say we want 200 time steps right so then what do we do for i in n p dot a range 0 to n now we have to define the initial value or the initial location so x naught comma y naught equal to 0 comma 0 that's fine now what we will do is we will create the increment array so if we have 200 steps what will be so let us make the increment array to look something like this let this be the increment array all right so the increment array we will say as just let's call it x equal to np dot zeros so now it has to be of two rows and n columns all right oops so yeah so we have created x which has two rows and n columns so and obviously we are initializing with zero so x naught y naught it doesn't make sense so now we will do for i in np dot a range 1 to n because the first point is already the origin so we don't need to worry about that now what we will do is we will write down the logic so x so for the ith um, column the first let me just do this so this will be delta x so this has to be 0 and this has to be delta y so basically if I am over here the 0th row ith column this will be that particular increment and this will be this particular increment so the increment in y will have a row number of 1 whereas the increment in x will have a row number of 0 now delta x will be l times cos of theta delta while delta x and delta y will be l times np dot sine of theta but now what is l and what is theta so l will be oh, in fact we don't even need to run this in a loop we don't even need to run this in a loop we can simply pass n and obtain all the steps that we need oh, fine and then we can augment it with zeros okay so well because i've written it so far let me just so we'll just call one angle and one stride at a given time l equal to get stride one element and theta equal to get angle one element so i'm not vectorizing the code i am asking it for each time step give me one stride and one length and obviously the stride will be one and the angle will also be one so i'm not vectorizing anything so let me run this and uh, okay there's a, there is an error ah sorry okay so now let me show you so after this we have generated a series of x and y increments so let me do the following let me do a cumulative sum so x trag or x increments we will say x 0 comma all and y increments will be x 1 comma all all right now we must do a cumulative sum so x trag will be np dot com sum x increment and y trag will be np dot com sum of y increment all right so, so far so good now we will plot x and y and that should give us the trajectory for a single particle so plt dot plot x trag comma y trag
okay so this is how the trajectory looks like it started over here and it's it's doing this random walk okay so if i run this again i will get a new random walk so let me because it's going to sample a new variable again all right so let me do that great so it's going in the other direction so let us now wrap this entire program so that we can run it for a few more particles so let me copy this let me go over here and let me so let me do it for more particles so let me write np equal to say 10 and over here i will write for j in np dot a range 1 to np so i'll do the whole initialization for each particle and eventually i'll do the plot so now let me run this and see what happens ah this has to be comma so great we have 10 trajectories using the pearson walk but now i have this data but now i really what i really want to know is i don't want to know the trajectory i just want to know what radial location the particles are at the end of 200 steps so how do i go about doing that i don't want to find the trajectories i don't want all this so that's quite easy so in fact let me preserve this bit of program let me go over here and so we still have this we still have number of particles and what we will do is we will wrap all of this in fact we don't need a come sum because come sum is required to find out the entire trajectory we just need a sum and the sum will give me the final point okay the come uh, the sum will give me the final point once i have this i will find out the r origin is equal to x traj square plus y traj square and i will take a square root of that that is it is the distance from the origin and i don't need to plot it so what i have over here is is a function is a neat function which which will give me the final distance from the origin so i will cut this i don't need all that i will define a function so i will define get final location and i will pass n that is the total number of time steps so over here i have to do the same declarations and eventually i must return r origin okay so it is abstracting that bit of code that you have to find the trajectory blah 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 but no i don't want to know all that i just want the final distance so i will simply go over here and i will simply call the final uh, get final location so i will say get final location lock and i will pass n that is for a large number of particles np i will pass that i want to know the final location for n number of steps that is 200 number of steps i will assign it to an array r all right and i will say r that is the final location is equal to np dot zeros and it will be of size yeah n rows and it's just n rows it's a vector okay so let me run this okay it seems to have run so let me print out r uh, sorry it has to be np it doesn't have to be n it obviously has to be np it has to be number of particles okay great so let me print out r so these are the distances at the end of 200 steps why is ah, this has to be from zero okay so these are the distances at the end of 200 time steps if i increase the number of uh, time steps i will get more 
distance from the origin let me let me see so over here you see a bunch of 15 7 24 but when i make 500 steps i should get a larger distance okay so now we are interested to find out the distribution right the distribution of uh, the r so let me make it 10000 let me make this as 200 so 10000 particles i should be able to then it, it will take a while to run because the code isn't vectorized and in fact i will ask you to vectorize it as a part of your home task it's not going to be an assignment but you should go ahead and try to do that i'll, I'll tell you what the logic will be well the program has run by now let me just ah, it's a big array so let me just plot it so uh, pl so bins counts nothing equal to plt dot hist and i will plot the histogram of r bins equal to let's say 40 bins density equal to true so it gives me this kind of a distribution okay if if i want a better fit to this i'll i'll probably use more number of particles and it will show this kind of distribution and it will be more illustrative when we do this in a log scale on the x axis if i take it in a log it will be it will it will show some kind of some kind of a power law this decaying tail may show some kind of a power law and that's for you to explore once you start learning about random walks and the distributions that you get from multidimensional random walks but this gives a very clear cut overview of what is going on right and okay so how do you go about vectorizing this it's quite easy well we have created the get angle and get stride function so and i'll just give an outline i'm not going to implement this so because you know the number of steps so then you will ask for get angle for n values so you will get a bunch of angles ranging from 0 to pi okay you have a bunch of angles you have a bunch of lengths and then using the formula delta x equal to l cos theta delta y equal to l sin theta you will have a, have a bunch of increments okay so then you augment this array with a zero and then you simply find the sum so in case you're just trying to find the sum you don't even need to augment the array with zero you just find the sum of these matrices okay and and that's it and let me just for completeness show you how i would do that so let me say s1 equal to get angles um, get angle let me just do it for um, 10 okay and s2 equal to get length or get stride 10 right so let me print those so these are the angles and these are the strides then you will say dx equal to s2 times np dot cos of s1 dy equal to s2 times np dot sin of s1 and so then you will have dx and dy and then you will say location x equal to np dot sum dx and location y will be np dot sum of dy and that's it i mean with the help of this you will have the final location okay so you don't need to run all those things in a loop okay and in fact, I'll do the modification once we go to the Levy walk, the Cauchy distribution. But for now, it, it gives a very clear overview of how you go about this. It's just you don't need, you can avoid this loop altogether. Well, I'll let you do that. Well, now that we have looked at a bounded distribution, we can turn our attention to a Levy walk. Well, let me reuse this program. So now instead of having a unit length as this stride let us do it for a Cauchy distribution so Cauchy distribution looks something like this 
it is usually 1 upon pi times 1 plus x square and this is for one dimension so this is the p of x for a Cauchy distribution and it's a symmetric distribution about the origin okay about the origin it's a symmetric distribution but now i am interested in the absolute value so we, we are more bothered with sampling the radial stride in a random walk using a Cauchy distribution so for that the distribution is actually 1 over um, pi square r times 1 plus r square and the reason is because once you try to find the cumulative of a step size distribution in two dimension it will not be simply integral p of x prime dx prime but rather it will be integral p of r prime 2 pi r prime dr prime if everything is symmetric because it needs to find the area so this is the area in 1d this is the area in 2d so then what is the cumulative of r it will be integral 1 by pi square r prime 1 plus r prime square 2 pi r prime dr prime so this pi cancels out so it's r going from 0 to r prime going from 0 to r so this becomes 2 by pi integral so this r prime cancels out dr prime by 1 plus r prime square so this is the same as finding out a, or a sampling a variable from the Cauchy distribution in one dimension okay so that gives us something to work around with so instead of having np dot once we can now have np dot random dot Cauchy so let us look at what the syntax for standard Cauchy is. So mode 0, no problem. And this is the distribution. Standard Cauchy is x0 equal to 0 and gamma equal to 1. Yeah, no problem. So we need to just give the size. All right, great. So size equal to n comma. And let's save it so now but wait so the Cauchy distribution will give you negative values as well so we need to exp or return the absolute value of this all right so we have returned the absolute value well let's run this let's see what happens so boom now we have what is a levy walk so it starts over here it makes huge jumps, huge jumps, then wanders around, his huge jump, wanders around, huge jump, wanders around, huge jump, wanders around, and things like that. So it's it's a classic foraging behavior. In fact, let me now run this program for NP number of particles. So let me grab hold of this program. So, so the beauty is we can reuse program. I mean, you don't need to be rigid about it. We just need to change how we sample the distribution okay so now let me run this so these are so let me make the aspect ratio correct so all right so one of the distributions really flew off so the thing is Cauchy distribution okay so the Cauchy distribution has that kind of a fat tail that we had discussed in the previous lecture corresponding to a Levy stable distribution or a Pareto distribution so it does have a tail in which there will be a small yet finite probability to get high jumps so high values of delta x or delta r in this case okay so there will be a chance to get that in fact let me just show you let me just plot the distribution function so r equal to np dot in space 0 to 10 and f will be 1 over y square times r 
times 1 plus r square and then we'll do plt dot plot r comma f okay so it looks something like this so the values are not zero over here they are small values but they are not zero so let me make it a log log because it's small probability but but not zero so you will more often than not sample things which are in the higher probability zone so you will sample small steps but every now and then you will sample that large step and that gives rise to this kind of a walk okay let me run it one more time so each time you do it you will get a random walk okay so now let me reuse one of our previous programs to find out the distribution of length for such a random walk let me copy this let me paste this so now what i'll do is i'll i'll make this get final location vectorized all right i'll, I'll make it vectorized but before that let me just change the get stride function i must replace it by this all right great so i will remove all this i will remove this i will say dx is n comma one i will say dy is also this and i will instead of calling it in a loop i will get ln theta i will remove the indentation once i have ln theta then so this this is just initialization so then dx well you don't, don't really need to initialize this you don't need to really initialize this it's sometimes good to initialize okay so then dx so instead of getting only one stride we'll get n strides and dx will be l times oops np dot cos of theta dy will be l times np dot sine of theta we don't need this we don't need any of this all right x trajectory will be simply the sum of all increments and the y trajectory will be simply the sum of all increments in the y direction and yes this that's it this is the entire function we have got it down from bunch of lines to only five lines great so let me run this and oops there is an error get final location ah so okay what is the problem let us let us see what is the problem so our origin so let us print out so it's it's a bunch of ah okay the issue is this has to be white trash okay i don't know why i did that okay so it's running the program for a bunch of particles i let it run ah, it's already run i oh. know oh, okay so it's already run we need to do the pdf so let me Let me copy this just to find out the PDF. Okay, so obviously there are some values over here, but most of them are still centered around the origin. In fact, uh, 
let me decide what the the bin locations will be so i will call it as bin space bin space equal to np dot lin space and let it go from say 0 to 100 so let us run this okay so the distribution looks something like this in fact we can increase it to 500 let's see what we have so we have something like this so it's a much fatter tail than before compared to the distribution over here so it, it decays down much faster but over here it tends to decay much slower so at a given point in time there are majority of the particles over here so the time we took was for 200 time steps it is peaking around 100 what was the peak over here it was something around 10 okay so the, the a larger peak is indicative of larger steps taken because of the Cauchy distribution and the distribution appears to be tailing off very slowly and these are all highlights of the levy walk so these distributions are usually a power law distributions okay so there are particles which have traveled such a large distances they are not large in number but regardless they are there okay so i'd like to conclude this particular week over here and a lot of things we have seen and once you start doing a course on probability and statistics i really hope you will find all these tools that we have discussed immensely useful and i hope you will make the best use of it with this i'll see you again next week have a good week bye